crisis. Wouldn't that be a more loving, rational way of going about it? Because what we have now is a boom industry of quote unquote gender affirming care clinics and pediatric gender clinics for 12, 13, and 14 year olds, some of which, by the way, do not require parental consent of a 13 year old that might make a mistake. And I think you would agree you made mistakes when you were 13 years old, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, so shouldn't we have a health care system and laws that reflect trying to protect the innocence of a 13 year old, not trying to incentivize their mistakes where they can't reverse that decision later in life? Yeah. Um... What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're going to be checking out Charlie Kirk Crush's pro trans student activist. Okay, that's going to be amazing. I'm going to Charlie Kirk. We're going to love kicking us. Let's get right to today's video. Hi, Mr. Kirk. Um, I'm Aaron, and I'm a student here. Um, I want to start off by saying I appreciate you giving me this opportunity to discuss these issues with you. And I want to say that though our beliefs differ greatly, I still think it's awesome to be able to converse with you respectfully. Um, for anyone recording me, please put me in an SJW cringe compilation. That's part of my childhood. Oh, okay, uh, good. <laughs> I think we can arrange uh, that. But here's what I want to ask you about. Um, so uh, trans youth experience extremely high suicide rates, and um, trans youth who transition, uh, receive hormone therapy or surgery, have significantly decreased rates of suicide, according to studies by uh, Turban et al. and Almazan Karoglian et al. Um, in fact, this effect becomes stronger the earlier they receive the surgery or hormone therapy, according to the same studies. Um, additionally, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders suggests treating gender dysphoria with transition hormone therapy or surgery. Um, so I guess just from a purely practical standpoint, regardless of political belief or what you think about trans people, um, wouldn't it be a good thing to allow access to these surgeries, um, just sort of empirically? Sure, let me first ask you a question. Why was there not a trans suicide issue in the 90s? Um, are you sure that there wasn't? It, it's very possible that um, the, I guess, the publicization and destigmatization of uh, transgenderism um, now is making it so that people who might have committed sure. suicide before, yeah. So the one thing we can agree on is people need help, right? True. I think the best way to help somebody that's suffering under a delusion is cognitive-based therapy and non-chemical, non-pharmacological interventions. You'd probably agree to be able to have counseling therapy. For example, if a girl's 11 years old and she's experiencing puberty or her father's not around and she might think she's a boy, wouldn't it be more loving to say, hey, let's go through some therapy to actually get you back into alignment with your biological reality, not put you on Lupron or chemical castration or irreversible surgical methods? That would probably be rational, right? Mm. Um, I think that if it were possible to uh, reduce these feelings by, I guess, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and things like that, I would definitely think that would be great. Um, but I guess uh, research also shows that um, rejecting uh, gender identity in youth typically also increases suicide rate. Um, so, so let me ask you another question. Do you think that people that are suffering under the mental delusion of transgenderism might have other underlying health, mental health issues? Um, yeah, certainly. Yeah, um, so it, it's not fair necessarily to connect transgenderism with suicide. It might be somebody that's suffering under gender dysphoria and also a heavy dose of depression, schizophrenia, anxiety, bipolar disorder, right? Yeah, um, I guess, but just uh, empirically, uh, allowing access to trans or gender affirming surgery does reduce that suicide not necessarily rate. so after six years there's a big thing called transition regret we have, we know 35,000 young people that are now vocally saying they regret gender like medically mutilating themselves and there is no reverse switch on that so again wouldn't it be rational to do what is reversible, which is just cognitive behavioral therapy, not what is irreversible to a 12-year-old that might be going through a temporary puberty-driven crisis. Wouldn't that be a more loving, rational way of going about it? Because what we have now is a boom industry of quote-unquote gender-affirming care clinics and pediatric gender clinics for 12, 13, and 14-year-olds, some of which, by the way, do not require parental consent. Uh of a 13-year-old that might make a mistake. And I think you would agree, you made mistakes when you were 13 years old, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, so shouldn't we have a healthcare system and laws that reflect trying to protect the innocence of a 13-year-old, not trying to incentivize their mistakes where they can't reverse that decision later in life? Yeah. Um... 
That's a good point from Charlie. I definitely agree that there are, there are certainly people who do regret these surgeries, and I don't think that's something we should uh, minimize. Um, but at the same time, there are also like hundreds of thousands of people who don't regret these surgeries, and um, I, I guess overall... So, so then maybe they should wait till they're 18. If that, I think that's the whole crux of this, right? So you've got 12, 13, 14, 15, and then I would have an, a separate moral question on that, right, even when they're 18. But we're focusing on the pediatric element, right, which I think is important. And let me just kind of reemphasize this, which I think is the question. Let me actually ask you this. Is there an age that's too young, in your opinion? If a six-year-old says, I think I'm a boy, do you think it might be too young to do surgery on them? You know, I'm, I think it's important for me to admit that I don't really know. But I do think I appreciate that, the honesty. <laughs> so, I, but you yeah. would probably say six-year-old, ooh, too much, right? I, I honestly wouldn't know. Um, I, I wouldn't say one or the other, but I would say that I guess over 18, how do we say? What do okay, you so let's, let's close every pediatric gender clinic in America and stop the chemical castration of our youth, which is exactly Simple where we were 10 years ago. I think we found a lot of agreement, my friend. Oh, sorry? I think we found agreement. I, I, don't, I don't really know either way on that one, but um, I guess but over 18. The crux of the debate in America today is focused on children. Teenagers make mistakes. Teenagers go through identity crises. Teenagers are susceptible to social contagions. Mm. Teenagers are susceptible to peer pressure or for other influences. And the laws and the culture should reflect, let's say, an atmosphere that respects the innocence of the child and says once you are of adulthood, you have certain agency and ability. Mm. I might disagree with that. but. I don't want to live in a country where an 11-year-old might, might be misled by a gender psychiatrist, mm. has their breast chopped off, mm. and wants to have that reversed in eight years. I don't think that is loving. I think that's cruel. I guess I, I still raise the issue of, um, in total, the, the number of people who are committing suicide would probably be reduced if we allowed these surgeries. Um, Not necessarily. So in the short term, yes. When you administer testosterone replacement therapy, you get a boost in self-esteem. You get a temporary boost in mental clarity. But that actually tapers after about five or six years, which is why you see the transition or community increasing. I could see you're coming after this from a good place. But I want you to think about this in the days and the weeks and all of you to think, how young is too young? I think that if you are in the teenage age, 12, 13, 14, and we're trying to say that we are so advanced, we're going we're gonna to prescribe Lupron, which was called too inhumane for rapists in prison, to young boys that effectively chemically castrate themselves, I think it is a rational moral argument to say, Let's make sure we don't do something irreversible to somebody that might be preyed upon. I think that's rather fair and reasonable. Unfortunately, that's considered radical enough where you have Antifa show up. So the student self is coming at a good point. If you hear his point of view, he's not there for like heated debates or cursing or bad words. He just wants to get clarity and make his point straight. And I respect him for that. At the same time, what his point is, what he's trying to say, is still not acceptable in a moral sense. In terms of like 12, 13, 14 years, going to do life altering decision on their body. Children are very susceptible. Um, teenagers are very um, susceptible. They are very susceptible to um, peer pressures and all that sense. And they just want to know more and get more clarity and also do what their friends are doing. So if someone come out to meet a child and tell him and convince him, is able to convince him, a teenager, let me don't use children, a teenager, and able to convince him that he should cut off his breast, she should cut off her breast, or the teenage boy should take some um puberty blockers, those things will st they will start seeing themselves as um, they were not born in the right body. But the people who are coming to tell them such ways are, uh, if you don't feel like a man, you can change to a woman. If you feel like a woman, you can change to a man. They are, a lot of them are delusional. Like, a lot of teenagers have regretted their actions. I watched one um, interview with Jada Peterson. 
a teenager who um, was gay, she cut off her breast, a life altering decision, and she regretted her action. I think the video have over is this six point something million views. She regretted her actions, guys. She's feeling pained. She took those puberty blockers. She 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 did a lot of surgeries. She spent a lot of money, guys. This pharmaceutical company, they are part of this narrative, this ongoing um LGBTQ transgenderism, they are part of it. The lady regretted her actions. There are a lot of people who are regretting their actions, and a lot of teenagers are dying. A lot of them are dying once they figure out that what they did is a big mistake they have made in their life. It's something that is very serious. And a lot of people who really does not get the full narrative in the longer run, they only think about presently. Like they, they are free to do what they want. Those are people who think about it now. So if you if you think about it, you know that okay, we have to think about the future, not just the present. Because at the long run, they tend to regret the action. A lot of people, a lot of teenagers who who did made some life altering decisions when they were teenagers, they tend to regret the actions. If they are 18 and above, um, is is a decision. You are grown enough to make such decision. Um, you are wise enough, you have seen life, and you can make any ultra decision you want and live your life the way it is. But bring it into teenagers, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, going to 18. Okay, 18, you're free. But those range that they are their, their brain is still growing. They are still, they are still growing more. They are still getting more awareness of life. They are still trying to figure out about their future, about their life, how life is going to be. So bringing such narrative to them, you are, you are confusing them. Let them get to a certain age and willingly want to do it. If they regret it later on in life, that was their decision. Not at a young age. Not at 12. Not at 13. Their, their brain, their, their sits trying to grow and figure out how life is. So this was interesting to watch. I love child's point of view. Uh, I love the students. I love that he was cool and coordinated. Comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as you can. Subscribe to our channel, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all